Hi! Today's video will be a nail art tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how I made this marble jade design with gel polish. Before I start the tutorial, can we just have a moment to appreciate how nice my natural nails have grown out? Like, girl. I think this is the nicest they have ever looked. Anywho, let's get started. I made this tester nail to figure out which color of polishes I would be using, and I ended up choosing these four, although you really only need two colors, the green for the base and the white for the detailing. I chose to include the turquoise and milky white for extra depth and variation in my design. It's also helpful to have a surface to mix on. I have a silicone tray, but any recycled plastic or non-absorbent surface will do. We'll also need to have a curing lamp or light, a fine tip lining brush, a flat sided brush, and I forgot to include a clip of it here, but we'll also need some isopropyl alcohol to clean your nail brushes. So I've already prepped my nails the other day, but I'll just lightly rebuff the top surface for the polish to adhere better and to get rid of any extra oils. We'll start off by applying a generous amount of translucent green. Usually a translucent polish is a bad thing, because that only means you have to apply more coats. But for our purposes today, it's exactly what we're looking for. It'll allow us to create visible layers and give us that depth and glow we see in natural stones. I'm being a little extra with mine, you could totally skip this step, but I wanted to make a gradation on my nails like you see here. So while my polish is wet, I'm applying a generous amount of milky white and mixing it around the bottom corner. And then with the turquoise, I'm going to do the same thing but in the opposite corner, and it should look fairly blended with no harsh lines when you're done. In the next step, we'll be drawing the veins, again on wet polish. The key to the marble look is applying everything wet on wet. I cannot stress that enough. It helps a lot to get that smooth, flowy look. So, with our fine tip brush and a bit of white, we are going to drag our brush from one corner to the other, and we're not trying to make perfect lines here. The wobblier and irregular -er, <laughs> the the wobblier and irregular -er, the more natural looking your results will be. So it's alright if you don't have steady hands, you can still recreate this look. Once you're happy with the placement of the lines, we're going to cure it for 30 seconds. And repeat the process, but with a few small differences. This time, I'm just applying the translucent green, no color variations. And with the white liner, I'm going to be creating lines that are slightly off from the first ones. You can already see how much depth this is creating. This is going to be my top layer, but if you wanted to, you can create another layer following the same process. But because it is my top layer, I'm being more intentional with the line work. Making thick and thin lines will create areas of interest and looks more naturalistic overall. With this technique, it's easy to go overboard and make too many lines, but I think the ones that turn out the best are the ones that show self-restraint. Here's an example of two that I made, and I think this one turned out a lot better. Once you're happy with how it's looking, you can go ahead and cure that for 30 seconds and we're pretty much done. I was going to show you guys another example, but I'm a little bit out of frame here, so instead I'll just take this time to show you some tips and tricks I've learned along the way. Number one, if your lines are looking too thick or not sharp enough in certain places, you can try cleaning your liner brush in isopropyl alcohol, make sure it's dry, and run your brush along the edge of the line you want to sharpen up. Number two, draw the main veins running in the same direction for all your nails for a more cohesive look. But don't place them in all the same area or it'll just look like you copied and pasted a nail sticker or something. Number three, consider your skin's undertone. I tried mixing a turquoise as the base for my index finger as you see on the side and I wish I didn't. I have warm undertones so the blue tinted green looked a bit odd on me and it just made my skin tone around it look a little dull. The olivey green on my thumb, however, complements my skin tone a lot better and makes the surrounding skin look more lively. I'll just do the rest off camera and this is how they turned out. I chose to do an accent nail on my ring finger just to show you guys that this technique can be used with any base color, but I think the set would have looked nicer if I had just left it green, but it's too late now. If marble jade nails weren't extra enough, I decided to add gold accents to all my nails and sealed everything off with a top coat. Here's how they look in natural lighting. If you found this tutorial useful, please like and subscribe. I do nail art tutorials every two to four weeks when I grow out my nails and need to retouch them. But when I'm not posting nail art videos, you can find me making resin keycaps, paintings, and soon to be pottery videos. So if you like DIY arts, crafts, and fashion, follow along on my artistic journey. The next video will be posted next Thursday slash Friday, so see you guys then. Bye!